Good morning. Welcome to um, this beautiful day. Such a blessing that uh, it's not too hot right now. It's a little cloud coverage. You may have a little sprinkle depending on where you are. But uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is May 2nd. Yesterday was May 1st. So it kicked off the celebration of my mother's birthday month. <laughs> her birthday is May 3rd. So really this is her birthday weekend. But um, I will be spoiling her for the month of May and fixing her whatever she liked and some of her favorites. So today I asked her what she wanted for breakfast and she told me, well, brunch, because you know we kind of do brunch here. Um, she told me uh, pancakes, but I'm going to surprise her by making her favorite kind of pancakes with a twist. So thank you for joining me today at Sharing Recipes. We'll be making bacon waffles, no, bacon pancakes with... Um, Sausage patties and uh, scrambled eggs on the side. All right, so I have already started. I have my bacon on. You can make this with bacon bits if you don't have um, fresh bacon in the house. You can substitute with bacon bits and I'll show you when it's time to use those bacon bits. Um, another way, like if you buy the real bacon bits, to give them um, a real cooked bacon, you know, to bring them back to life, it's okay to saute them in the pan first before you put them in the recipe that we're coming up with. Notice that the coloring of these are different, and that's because those were bacon pieces that I had cooked um, a couple days ago. And so, really, all I'm doing is bringing them back to life. Yeah. Because we're going to use these in our recipe today. All right. So, I'm going to prop y'all. It's time for me to turn my sausage and do my cutting process. Um, I did a pre-cut where I did some slices ahead of time while it was still in the um, plastic to make it easier for me to separate it. And then I'm doing my pressing method. So I've been able to perfect my method every time I do it. So I pre-sliced it before I took it out the package, cut it down the middle, took the paper off, and that's how I was able to make my patty. I'm going to scoop my bacon over. Some of my bacon is ready to flip. And we're going to potentially make this a little crispy so that it will be easier for us to crumble up or to cut up or however you prefer to chop up your bacon once we get to that process. All right, so show you guys the whole grill. And I'm using my grill today because so that way I can cook a lot of things at one time. So my sausage method, I let it cook on one side for just a little bit, clip it and press it. And that way I don't get any stickage to my spatula. All right, so I'm gonna turn all my meat down to give it time to thoroughly cook and simmer. Some of my pieces are ready, so I'm gonna get my um, napkin and have that ready to take off as this cooks. While our meat is finishing cooking, we're gonna start prepping our pancake mix. So I'm 
So I happen to have some pancake mix here because when I went to the store, that's an essential for us. So I bought some. But for those of you that don't have pancake mix, I think I've given you this recipe before, but I don't mind giving it to you again. If you've ever read the back of a pancake mix box, the base of pancake mix is one cup of flour, basically a tablespoon of baking soda. If you don't have baking soda, you can substitute um, baking powder, cream of tartar, you have to have that. If you've ever read what's inside of those, it has some baking soda. So, um, and um, salt, there's your base. Those are your base dry ingredients. Everything else we add is for flavor. So flour, baking soda, salt. If you don't have baking soda, you can use baking powder, cream of tartar. Because those contain some form of self of rising ingredient, okay? That's what makes them fluffy and keeps them from being hard and dense. So my recipe is I add a half a cup of sh white sugar, and then I put uh, cinnamon, and those are my dry ingredients. I mix all those up, and then I add two eggs, vanilla, a little bit of uh, oil or melted butter, so like maybe two tablespoons. And then, um, you know, add milk until it's the condensity that you like. If you like your pancakes to be thicker and fluffier, then you need to use less milk. Your batter needs to be kind of thick and lumpy. If you like yours to be thin and um, flatter, then your batter needs to be smoother and less lumpy and not as thick. So there you go. That's how you make pancakes from scratch. But I have some, so I'm gonna be doing my quick ones. Why not? But if you don't have any, there's how you make it. All right, so this is our favorite brand, Ancient Mama. We also like Hungry Jack, but we buy that if we can't find Ancient Mama. And we like the original. My mama does not like complete. So I like to make mine in one of these because it already has all the measurements on the side of the container. And I'm not a real big pancake. I'm not a big home pancake fan. I know how to make them and I make them very well. My family enjoys them, but I really like uh, IHOP Original Pancake House. And that's it. Those are the only places I like pancakes from. So that's just me. All right, so I got one cup because I'm just making enough for my three, my mama, my daughter, my son. Some more of my bacon is done, so I'm going to take it off. I want it to be crispy but not burnt because you'll taste that burn in your pancakes. All right, and I think our sausage, let me see. Nope, because we like ours to be crunchy. So sausage is not ready to flip. Let's go back to our pancake mix. So let me get out. And you know, if I'm using the quick, I just do the ingredients that's on the back of the box. I just follow those instructions. So all I need for one cup is one egg, a tablespoon of oil, and three fourths a cup of milk. But I say use as much milk as you like, depending on the texture of pancakes you enjoy. Let me get everything out. And I'm going to actually be using um, avocado oil because that's a healthier choice. If I'm going to be adding it into my food, I'll use olive oil. And I do that with my cornbread. Um, what I need eight, just one eight for right now. We'll get the rest of them out when it's time. And you know what, if you don't have milk in the house, let's say you have sour cream, that's a good substitute. It'll come out the same way. 
sour cream is dairy. It's just another type of dairy that was processed different. All right. And if you have dried milk in the house, you just do a cup of water to probably, I tend to do equal parts. It works fine for me. A cup of water to a cup of dried milk and just keep adding water until it's smooth. But if I'm mixing it with something, I just put the dried milk in there as with my dried ingredients and then add the liquids. And then it that's how I do. So I always keep some dried milk. I keep canned milk. Um, at the dollar store, you can find that milk that comes in the cartons and it doesn't have to be refrigerated until you open it. I don't potentially like how it tastes like drinking it, but it tastes okay if you're using it in food. So it's just fine. I'll take my bacon off. So I put my one egg. And let me add my avocado oil. And I'm just visualizing one tablespoon, so I probably put about one and a half. And then I just start with about what I think is three-fourths a cup. And I'll just add more to it as I need to. The rest of my bacon is ready to come off. So let me show y'all the bacon real quick. And if you don't have a griddle, of course, you can cook this in a pan on the stove. So I always do this like punch down twist method to break up my eggs and to kind of push all the liquid down to the bottom to keep the splatter low. And then I start my circular process. Like that. And this is perfect. I mean, I make pancakes a lot, so I know how much to use. That's the condensity that I want. So I don't have anything else to do. I'm done. I like to let my pancake mix sit because it rises and it allows it to kind of double and it'll make the pancakes a little fluffier. So um, just doing one last scrape to make sure I got it at the bottom. Let's see. Y'all tell me, did I get it? Yeah, looks like I did. Ooh, ooh. Mm, mm, ooh, ooh. So while that's sitting and rising, my meat is finishing and I can clean my griddle and get it ready for our pancakes and prep our bacon. Getting my measuring cup out. I'm gonna do a third of a cup. <sighs> it's my mom's birthday. I want to do something special. I can't find my mold, so I'm going to try to create a heart on my own. Do y'all think I can do it? I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. We shall see. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start scraping this bacon grease off of the pan. And tip for today, we're cooking with a griddle. It's always best to clean it while it's hot because all that stuff comes right off. If you let it cool, you don't have to reheat it to, to get the best cleaning results. Like, I mean, get all those pieces that might have um, burnt on off. You want to heat it up. It works the best that way. Sausage is ready to flip. And I want to have like the maximum space for my pancakes 
And so since they're all like congealed together now, I'm gonna move them over out the way so that I can have the most space for my pancakes and continue cleaning my grill. See how easy all of that comes off? It's cause it's hot still. It hasn't had time to stick. So this is step one, is to get all of that off. Sausage just cooks like that, especially if you like them like how we like them with a crisp or a crunch. If you like yours with a softer texture, these are done for you. you just wanna cook them till they're not pink. And my griddle has a little disposal in a drawer where it all goes into, and then I just clean that. All right, so I got enough of this off now where all I'm gonna need to do is get a paper towel and just wipe it down. So let me get one. I'm gonna clean off my spatula because I'm using this for pancakes and I don't want to have those pieces on there. Then I just hold it because it's gonna move if you don't. And just wipe the remainder of the grease either towards where you're cooking or the hole, the disposal hole. And I'm just getting the extra off because, I mean, it doesn't hurt to leave a little bit coated for your pancakes. And I like to cook pancakes on like 300, so I turned this down. My grill's ready. My pancake mix is rose. Notice how it's got kind of a bubble up in the middle. It's doubled. And now that was perfect timing because now I'm ready to use it. Mm -hmm. So let me get my pink and shears. Y'all know how much I like to use my pink and shears. Oh, and I just have my comfy pants on today for cooking. Let me show you. These are brought to you by CJ. They have the feet in them. My mama bought us some for Christmas and then of course we had to get another pair and they're very comfortable. If you're about my size, these are uh, a large and then they, you know, they fit comfortable. You don't want them to be all tight. If you want them to be tight, get a medium. But I want to be comfy, so I ordered a large. Okay. And then they shrink just a little bit. Um, you know, I'm about 5'5". Five, five, so the length was perfect for me. They were too short for my mom. She's 5'8". So she had to get another size, but mine are good. All right, so my pink and shears are over here. Over here. Come on. Yay. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make, everybody wants different pancakes. Cause like I tell you, I'm a short order cook around here. So my son wants plain pancakes. My mom and my daughter will want um, baking pancakes. So I'll be making both at the same time. That's why I'm using one third of a cup to give me, you know, normally I use the uh, little uh, half cup, but I'm trying to give myself room to add the baking. So each piece, each one will get bacon cut. And remember, I use half strips of bacon. So this is really a half a piece of bacon. Earlier I said half cup, I meant I normally use a fourth cup. But I have my one third cup to make room for the baking. And then I'm gonna use my one fourth to put the batter amount in. And let me show you what it looks like when you've let it sit and rise when you start to scoop. See, it's, that's like 
perfect pancake batter because it's going to have a nice rise to it when we begin to cook it. Okay, so let me scoop and put it in my one third. There, so that's enough. And I'm just gonna pour that right on. And the bacon sticks to it because it's sticky. And I use that cup to spread that out. And that's how we, we got it. All right. So we're gonna make another one. I'm gonna prop you so you can just see the process and I'll talk to y'all while I'm doing it. So I'm gonna get my next strip. And these are crispy enough to where I could just break it up too. You know, I just like using my paint and chews. But I'm gonna show you to just break it up. Make sure you've washed your hands, which I have. And I'm just mixing this up again to make it easier to, cause it's doubled now, so it's ready for me to start cooking with it. And I just shake it to get it all even. Make sure it's enough. I'm going to shake it out. And because it's sticky, the bacon comes right out with it. And then I use the ends to spread it. All right. Let's do the same process again. Because my mom's probably going to want two or three this size. And same with Paige. Plus, the good thing about my pancakes is... If they don't eat them, you know, I'll put them in the uh, refrigerator and reheat them again for the next day. Same thing, balance it out. Dump it on the bacon sticks. That's why I put it in first. Use the top to spread it. And let's do it again. And I wanted bacon with my uh, meal on the side. I'm not eating pancakes. I'm eating rice, some leftover rice. So I'll also be showing you how to rejuvenate uh, leftover rice. Shake it, even it out. Plus it gives that bacon time to get all, that batter time to get all down in there. There we go. Use my thing to spread it out. Now the um one common mistake I see, and so now that I have to make my sons, I'm just using my regular one fourth. And he he told me the other day he likes it when I make them small, so I'm gonna do baby cakes for him. And I got that term from um, Original Pancake House, which is also where my, my kids found their love for pancakes because Original Pancake House has a great mix. So I've just made him one, two, three, four, five, about half dollar size pancakes. So he can just pick them up and dip them if he wants to. It's okay every now and then to let boys be boys and eat with their hands as long as they clean up afterwards. So our pancakes are actually ready to flip. So I'm gonna turn the camera so you can see the process. All right, so notice how they rose. This was the first one. So I'm gonna start with this first one and work my way around in order. Now, the number one mistake that people make with pancakes is that when they flip them, they press them down. Don't do that because you take out the air that you put into it to make it fluff, okay? Allow the pancake to finish its rising process because when it sits on the plate, it's gonna naturally go down by itself. 
So don't press them, just flip them. Let's do the next one. There we go. And which one did I do next? This one? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And I just put that one on. So I want to give it a little bit more time. And the sausage is cooking low with the pancake. So I'm not worried about it burning. See? Cooking low. And you want your sausage well done. You don't want to eat sausage raw. So as long as it's on a low simmer, you're going to be just fine. And it stays warm. And I have enough batter to make uh, Jair a couple more or one more bacon pancake, which is probably what I'll do. I'll make one more bacon pancake. All right, this one's ready to flip. And there we go. I'm going to check underneath here to make sure. See, it's cooking nicely. That looks good. So I'm going to let those do what they do and get my eggs ready because we're going to have some scrambled eggs too with our meal today. And I'm just going to use a measuring cup since I already have that out. And I'm able to use one cup total of eggs for all four of us because that's plenty. The method that I use to cook makes the eggs fluff. And so I don't have to give everybody two eggs, but they're going to think they got two eggs. Everybody get one egg. Especially with this new um, information I've heard about possible shortages of any animal products. So, um, yeah. Anywho, let's flip Jire's eggs. I mean, pancakes, they're ready. I'm just breaking them because they stuck together a little bit. And he has enough room for me to put one more right there. And my son is picky. He will not eat it if it's got little pieces of meat or something in it. So we're going to give those time to cook. The other pancakes are ready. Our sausage is ready. So now all I need to do is go ahead and begin making the eggs so that everything is hot and warm at the same time. I have turned my griddle down on warm to slow the cooking process. And to give everything time to stay warm while I fix the eggs, it's not going to take that time. So I want to show you guys this new method that I've used in order to make egg stretch. So instead of using a pan, I'm going to cook them in a pot. And this is a small, the smallest size pot that you could get in a set. So let's see if it's got the measurements on the back. This is one quart, one quart. Let me preheat it. And I'm going to use real butter. So let me get it. But, you know, eggs don't take long to cook. And to prevent it from, like, getting the little brown bits, we're going to be constantly stirring them. Flipping them, I should say. Because that's part of the process to flip them and fold them rather than chop and stir. We will have a chopping process, but that'll be at the end when we're ready to start serving it. All right, so I'm gonna use, let's see what my measurement is, two tablespoons of butter. Two tablespoons is about a cube. Let me show you what it's doing. It's preheated, so I'm going to turn my heat down to medium low, which is between two and three. If you have a gas stove, and I want to get all of that butter nice and melted. 
And while that's doing that, I get my egg. Oh, and that extra pancake for dryers where it just looks. All right, so let's get back to it. Crack these eggs. I'm cracking them before the butter starts to brown. You don't want brown butter. You want to put the eggs in while the butter's still nice and yellow and clear. And I'm doing that one-handed method where you crack it in the middle, put your two, put your thumb and your middle finger in between and pull it apart. If you accidentally get a shell, which I did, the easiest way to get it out is with a spoon and just push it up the side. Okay, see, getting old, y'all. Getting blind in my old age. Oh, maybe I didn't, but I think I did. So let me look. Maybe not. Okay. Nope. Shell free. All right. So let's go ahead and begin that cooking process. And see, I haven't pre-mixed them or anything. They're in there cooking. And I'm going to go ahead and season it. Salt. Pepper. And now I'm going to begin to just beat the yolk and mix it with the white. Okay, it's all mixed up nice and good. Now, that egg is going to begin to uh, fluff. And I'll know it is because on the sides, and I just do that scraping off the sides so that that stays a part of the food and doesn't burn. So I'm gonna watch it. I gotta watch it. But while that's going that, I could take my plates out. So that I'm ready to cook. Cause when those eggs get done, I'm gonna be ready to start putting them on plates so that I can halt to cook the cooking process. You know what I mean? All right. So here's what I mean by the fold method. When I scoop from the bottom, I'm just flipping them over, flipping them over, flipping them over. I'm not chopping them. I'm just getting those ones that's cooked and flipping them to give the rest of it time to cook. And then I'm scraping the edges down. You're potentially doing the baking process just like we did with that macaroni the other day. And I'm going to keep doing that. My mom likes her eggs soft scrambled. So I will be um, taking some of these out for her before I finish cooking them off for my kids. No help today, y'all. <laughs> All right. These are cooked enough for my mom. And so when I'm ready to serve, then I chop. That's what I said, you don't chop till you're ready to serve. The fold and flip makes them double. And if you need to stretch them because you don't have very many eggs, remember you can add milk, cream, half and half, almond milk, but I'd use regular because you're not trying to have no like sweet aftertaste in your eggs, unless you are. Pancakes. Yummy, yummy. Baking pancakes. Yummy, yummy. Baking pancakes. 
No, as I always say, presentation presentation. <clears throat> so my son's gonna want to dip his. Um, my mom's daughter will want to pour, so I'm going to give heat up the syrup, but I'm gonna give him a little dipping cup of his pancakes. Container. On the shelf. I found it. That didn't help, but thank you. <laughs> she ain't no help. She said on the shelf. I knew it was on the shelf. I was asking her what shelf because she moved it. But that's okay. It's her birthday month. She can say whatever she wants, okay? Let me get this syrup in here. So we fill up our glass because we like hot syrup. Plus, here you use less of it. So I'm gonna put this in the microwave for 35 seconds and let it get up hot. So my mom's gonna want butter, so I'll put that on the side. She'll be able to pour her own syrup on. My son will be able to dip his um, pancakes in. And my daughter likes her butter on top. So let me get all of that plated and I'll show you the finished product, which is basically the same way, but just how they like it. Yeah, mama. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Careful, it don't slip, yeah. Screw the top on. And voila, oh, you're done. Before I serve it, I like to rinse it in hot water to just get all the stickiness off. In that same towel that I used to get it out, same towel I can use to dry it, and now it's ready to present to my family that I love so much. All right, let's see. There we go. All nice and clean for them to be ready to use and not be sticky at the end. <laughs> All right. So let me pour Jair's syrup in his dipping cup. And I'll show you everyone's plate. Here's my mama. 
She likes her butter on the side so she can feel like she's controlling how much she's putting on. But it's really the same amount I would have put on there, but don't tell them. My daughter, she likes hers on there. Put on there. She likes her egg cooked. She don't like none of that white to be clear. She want to make sure all that white is cooked. And my son told me the last time I made pancakes, he liked the ones that I make when he can dip them. So I did it for him this time. And so this is his portion. So there you have it. And my daughter. And my mama. <laughs> One thing I definitely do is I cook with love. I serve them how I would want to be served. I prepare their food how I would want my food to be prepared because I love them. They don't deserve anything less than that and i'm teaching my daughter and my son that my mom talked to me so i have to pass it on you know all right so thank y'all so much for joining me at um sharing recipes it means so much when i know that you're out there um pancakes is a is a normal thing you can spice it up with bacon. You can spice it up with sausage. You know, you crumble it, crumble it, cook it and crumble it. Even pecans, walnuts. I've already showed you how you can spice it up with bananas. Any type of berries can go into a mix and it'll cook. And oh, I recommend trying it with blackberries, blueberries, raspberries if you like those. Um, and um, let's see, apples. I'm trying to think of how else I've had it. Oh my gosh. If you like um, like apple bread pudding or something like that, cut you up some apples and add some brown sugar and uh, melted butter to your mix. Okay. And then go ahead and sprinkle them with some uh, cinnamon and sugar and brown sugar mix and serve them like that with some syrup some powdered sugar or something and they're gonna be the bomb i wouldn't do that because i'm not i like my i'm playing <laughs> i'm playing but strawberries are good so just some tips on how you can spice up your pancakes to make them different especially if you're like us we're not eating out at this time everything is home cooked um or at least home microwaved home oven you know what i'm talking about we're not we're the we're the people that aren't we don't could Going. we're not going out and we are supporting small businesses in other ways but not through food uh, those of you that are supporting them I, I appreciate you for supporting them but mentally I can't do it so and those of you that know what I mean about that I appreciate your understanding thank you again for joining me at uh, sharing recipes I will be having my first intermittent talk this evening so stay tuned and as a surprise for my mom's birthday i'm going to be making her favorite one of her favorite dishes today for her for dinner so stay tuned be blessed peace out